Hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name is Blue. Alongside of me is Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> you like that? I did. <laughs> I like the Starburst that I have in my mouth right now. I have my mouth it? so watery. I can't even talk normal. Your eyes are watery too. Because of it. <laughs> what flavor is it? What flavor? What flavor? I put two in my mouth right now. <laughs> and you know when you're about to talk and you have like something in your mouth and it's just all watery and going, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, what, what Thank flavors? you guys. What flavors? It was uh, yellow and uh, pink. Mm, oh. that's, mm-hmm. a, that's almost So you like, got like a pink lemonade almost. Yes, like, like a strawberry yeah. lemonade or something. Yeah. Thank you guys for enjoying that Starburst with me. This segment's <laughs> brought to you by Starburst. <laughs> <laughs> An enjoyable flavor. If they were only so lucky, right? The if they time. were only so lucky, but that is literally what I had in my mouth. So thank you guys yeah. for listening to our podcast, <laughs> Cannabis Talk 101 all around the world. And uh, make sure you check out the website, CannabisTalk101.com, yeah. as we are yeah, the world's baby. number one source for everything cannabis. So many great articles and blogs on the site. Call us up anytime, 1-800-420-1980. Oh, there it goes. 1980. What a great year that was. Yeah. Check out the IG pages at Cannabis Talk 101. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother Blue is at the number one, Christopher Wright. What's up, And I'm at Joe Grande 52. And if you're looking to grow a plant, you guys, if you want a trusted cannabis seed at a fair price, you need to head to rocketseeds.com or on IG at rocket underscore seeds. Uh-oh. On the, school, on the show today. Not the show, but the show. The show today. Keith? Is that it? That's it. Keith Huffman. Now, Keith, he's Keith. the founder. Keith. Like Keith, but no F with a V. Keith. Keith. Now, he's the founder and CEO of Engager Brands. Now, Keith Huffman understands not only music, but music lifestyle, right? Their team has stepped in the music industry and the business of music. They know how music drives, tests, and culture. They partner with the best-in-class cannabis cultivators and leverage that knowledge into the legal cannabis industry. Now, whether Riffin and Raven, they engage with music fans and cannabis consumers where they are all over the place, right? Their brands are based on long-standing relationships and deep history with music industry veterans in front of the mic, production, and DJ booths. These relationships are now ma- manifesting in exciting new ways as the, as the music and legal cannabis industries collide, which is dope because it's kind of what we're doing too, Blue, right? It's like what we come from. And that to that end, you guys, they've created cannabis brands that relate to specific music genres and communities that align with them. Come say what's up to their brand, Heavy Grass, October 6th through the 9th at Aftershock, the four-day heavy metal festival in Sacramento, California, where we pop at. So if you're out there in Sacramento, go to Aftershock and support this event. Let's welcome to the show, you guys, Keith Huffman. Yeah. Give it up for the man. Make sure you check them out on social media at Heavy Grass Official at Neon Roots on TikTok. It's Heavy Grass Official. Keith, thank you so much for coming on the show, brother. Appreciate Thanks for you. having me. Uh, so great. are you throwing Aftershock? So every year we're partnered with uh, their promotion company, uh, yeah. Danny Wimmer Presents. This will be our fourth year now activating at Aftershock. They so, have what's called the Loud Lounge there, which is yeah. just for all the cannabis brands. Yep. And we were one of the first cannabis brands to ever be allowed onto the uh, the grounds there. Sure. And we take our we have a big van. We take our van there and we do uh, giveaways. We do all kinds of things. And, nice. you know, we're partnered with a bunch of the different bands that play. And yeah, it's a big event. It's our biggest event every year. It's like a, they're expecting one hundred and twenty thousand people there. Is that all? Uh, yeah, yeah, over over four days. Over it's a crazy. four day period. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that's you know, they, day. That's we, we were talking period. to some of the team about getting involved with that, you know, um, and it's just it's so exciting to, to see the industry just bringing out brands like yourselves and and all of us getting our community the awareness that that cannabis is here. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's here to stay and we need more of these events. I mean, this it, is it is. I mean, I remember the first time and we've been around. I, we incubated the brand Heavy Grass at my last company. We, sure. we, we created that in conjunction with my business partner, who's uh, one of the big uh, uh, agents in the world right now. He, he books a lot of the rock bands. And we first went out and we went out to a bunch of different rock festivals, not even in California, just to kind of test the waters and say, is there an interest in what we're doing? And it was crazy. We put a big pot leaf up on a, up on a, um, up on a tent First first festival we ever did, I'll never forget. It was uh, it was called Carolina Rebellion. It was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, no legal weed, obviously in in North Carolina, especially not four years ago when we did this. 
and we had the longest line out of any of the booths <laughs> and people would come up and it would be like testimonials going it was like yeah, first aid baby. line like oh my god we're not sitting yeah, here helping people and saving people but the lines like i need you guys it would oh. be like oh my god i've been waiting for this a brand that speaks to me and so we go after audiences and, and music audiences that currently don't really have a lot of brands to choose from if you're going after a music audience typically right now in cannabis you've got everyone kind of going after the rap or the reggae audiences sure. you know a little bit of country you know going on but really we're the only metal brand out there right now and we've also got another brand through engager brands that. called uh, neon roots and that's focused on the edm and rave scene so you know we're we're really trying to go out and we're also focused on marketing at these events for a very specific reason because i feel like so much in cannabis we end up getting everyone kind of in this little bubble of just t talking to each other and yeah, promoting echo, to each other. We call it an echo chamber. Yeah, it happens a lot. Yeah. That's why we try to throw big events. That's why like we that. threw a big, that's why we, we just did the Burning Trees Festival. And, and, you know, we, I would say that there was probably, you know, let's call it, you know, three or 4,000 people that were part of the echo chamber, but we brought another six or 10,000 people that weren't. And, yeah. And so, Facts. you know, when we were able to do that, it was, it was a big, heavy to our heart. That's why I said, you know, I'm, I'm, support you and aftershock, aftershock is dope yeah and these events because you know quite frankly we we get cut into okay two thousand people we're throwing these events and it's the same two thousand people now we all don't know each other you know but some of us do and some of us has worked together and realized that there's bad actors and there's good actors and then um you know we we've been fortunate to now start seeing events coming outside like even rolling loud i think rolling loud's a bit uh, you know a good example of you know what's happening out there as well Absolutely. We're starting to see more and more at these music festivals that you are seeing cannabis brands that are being sponsors. Uh, and I love it. I mean, I love to see what's going on right now. Also, in just outside of music, you know, MMA has been very embracing yeah. of, of in cannabis. Miami, they're having a big event coming up out there. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, MMA, mixed martial arts. And then also, you know, you got the Diaz brothers. Uh, those boys, you know, shout out to Nick and Nate Diaz for, you know, put, really pushing it, really pushing the, you know, the the brands and the envelope. The, I mean, smoking a CBD joint at a weigh in. I mean, you yeah. know, he's been pushing the envelopes just. Yeah. And far. that's and that's really what we're you know, we're a we're trying to just more normalize this. But really, more than anything, it's just we're trying to look most consumers of, of you know, most people that spoke weed like they don't. I mean, certain people consider themselves to be, you know, stoners or we, but most people it's just like, it's just part of what they do, right? Are professionals, right? They really look at themselves as professionals. And what do you mean? I just happen to smoke weed. It's not, nothing, nothing. And so we just want to be a part of their lifestyle. So we really kind of look at these as building lifestyle brands and we're providing them with cannabis products that work within their lifestyles. And, you know, also we have other products too. You guys, uh, a couple of oh, this oh, some goodie, oh, goodie. Oh, 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 hand him down. Here we go. Heavy grass. No, but you know, you know how we do it. Let me take mine first, and then look in yours second. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take your second, Joe. I got mine first and yeah. your second. Thank you. Yeah. What's heavy grass? What do you give us here? What do you, you know? What? So we've got, oh. so we've got uh, three, three. Main... A picture of blue on the front. Look there it. you go. Oh man, there it is. A clown pants. That's actually one of our collabs we do. So clown is the creative force behind the band Slipknot. So we did uh, clown cannabis. It's a infused, uh, you know, hash infused pre rolls with Ooh, him. Nice. Um, we've got. It literally heavy reminds me of your band, like Imperial Stars. Like it yeah. really. And, and wow. when you dressed up for Halloween, like I said, this literally, I was like, that, oh my god, it reminded me of. That is my. That is if my, they close down the one hundred and one freeway, <laughs> they were clowns. <laughs> <laughs> we did shut the freeway down in the middle of rush hour traffic. I love this pick. There's Dude, a pick you got a in nice here. little uh, gift box right there. Yeah, yeah we got kif. Uh, we got. Uh, a riff kit we got tens for picks pick tens um we've got Ooh, we've got a whole bunch of this on the uh the pick that's uh our buddy uh Chow? svh no, no that's svh yeah who is this yeah, yeah so so svh runs sales for us that's it but that's a picture of him. that's the guy he did our song huh? that's our buddy that did the song yeah he did our theme song yeah, for what's us his yeah name? Uh, svh yeah scott well, scott, scott. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he so he literally did a cannabis talk one on one theme song for us. I got to play it for you. I got to find that. It's so so he, awesome. So dope. Yeah. So Scott's been a he's a big fan of ours. Um, he you know he used to be in a rock and a metal band, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah, he's got that like, metal voice. Oh, he's yeah, awesome. He did a yeah. whole rock and rock and rock. Have you heard? It's already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like cannabis talk the new one on one. I'm gonna find it real quick. Watch it. Yeah, so there you cool. go. Yeah. So yeah. So look, I mean, we're just going out there and and marketing. And really being a part of the of the lifestyle, because at the end of the day, also these audiences are very. At the end of the day, also these audiences are very fickle, right? They can see sure. through the bullshit pretty quickly. If you're not authentic, 
we work with a lot with baby bands. We'll like give them gift bags like this. And it's amazing, right? Because they'll do, they'll do unboxings. They'll do all different kinds of things. Um, but yeah, so we've got Heavy Grass, which is our, our flower brand. It's Man, like, the, this is for me. Yeah, yeah, wow. it's the it's the Jack Daniels of weed. Uh, you know, we're, we're Jack Daniels of weed. We're going right. We're going that's for good. it's a good place to be. It, yeah. Oh, here it is. Sorry, here it goes. I got your guy right here. right here. This is your guy that was, uh, that's on your pick. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Dog, is that not <laughs> sick? Amazing, man. Dude, when he made this for us, I was yeah. so impressed. That's in the drive. So, so he's our head of sales, uh, you know, at, through Higher Vibes, which is his company. Yeah. You know, he, it's funny. We also uh, overlapped with 22 Red because at my oh, last, no at my last company, Chavos, we, right? Chavos, we, right? we, we helped, uh, inc you know, we helped create that. So my last company, I worked for a company called Prohibited Media. I was one of the founders. We had an agency, worked on over 60 different brand projects. And so that was part of the reason why that and we incubated heavy grass there. I brought that with me when I kind of uh, spun off from them to just focus on the brands, because for me, I see just an opportunity to create these brands that that resonate for audiences everywhere in the world. You know, what I see a lot with cannabis brands is that typically they're really focused on their local audiences, right? For a reason, because you can only sell locally, you can only sell within your state. Correct. And eventually when this all opens up, as we know, it's going to. The, the brands, the brand <laughs> that actually means something to an audience, you yeah. know, kind of outside of it's like gonna hit. having to, you know, having to go and re-educate people. Like, what, what does this farm mean? You know, what is, why is this important? It's like, oh, this is the heavy metal brand. Oh, this is the EDM brand. Oh, that's, that's my tribe, right? This is my brand. You know, it's funny because I, I, I don't feel like a lot of people understand what that rollout looks like. Yeah, it's a big you know, role. It's you know, different. I sit there. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, whatever. Like, like you know, Costco, like Kirkland brand, or one of these. You know, you know, what what is uh, the the major Costco? Kirkland. You know, it's like they already understand how to how to put this in a multi state. They can run it. You know, international, nationally. They understand how to warehouse it, where to place those warehouses. And I think when you think and of, make things cheaper and make yeah. things a more lot affordable. cheaper, right? More, more affordable, more, not more, cheap. Yeah, affordable. More, more affordable. That's yeah. Right. Well said, yeah, very yeah. well said. And, and, and I think that when you look at the cannabis operators, it's such a new, you know, emerging market. There's very few people that actually can sustain that kind of a rollout. So almost everybody that wants to play ball is going to play ball with Big Brother and get rolled up. Because if you don't, then, you know, you're, you're forced to try and sustain yourself in a market where, which you know and have no business in. You know, I, I, I say that, you know, respectfully because I've, I've sat down and I'm, I'm a fan of mom and pop growers. I'm a fan of, uh, you know, uh, from seed to sale. And, and, and I'm a fan of that, uh, that. You're also a fan of big business. But I'm also a fan of big business. And I'm also a fan of, of mainstreaming this product line and, 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 and like heavy grass and many others. Yeah, it's it's an important, you know, rollout. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the view. We're taking the long view on this, right? Because it's not a matter of if, but when, you know, this yeah. goes federally oh, yeah. legal. And honestly, there's a lot of other countries that are way ahead of us. I've been spending a lot of time lately down in Mexico and Colombia, yep. Germany, Thailand. Um, you know, there's there's heavy metal fans everywhere in the world, right? Oh, yeah. There's EDM fans everywhere in the world. So uh, we've got some other brands that we're incubating as well. And we're just looking at this as like, it's a matter of time. And when the time does come, we're going to we're staying in our lane. Our lane is like we're really good at at building brands and, and building demand for those brands by, by focusing very specifically on the target audience. Sure. And um, we see that as a big white space right now out there. And and music in particular, you know, there's not a lot of music focused brands and, and, it's, and it's fun too. I mean, I come from the music industry. I worked in the music industry in New York 15 years. Um, well, I, you know, and not to cut you off, but I want to hear about that story. That's what I want to get to. Let's take a break real quick. The, the brand, we heard about it right now. Engage your brands. It's amazing what you're doing. I want to hear about that history right there because the music industry is very similar to what you're doing. And I want to hear about these correlations. It's Cannabis right Talk 101. We'll be right back. Ah! Nice. Yes. Ha 
Ah. Turn your typical into something special, you guys. When it comes to infused products, the flavor you taste should be just as enjoyable as the feeling you experience. Visit the website, LoranOils.com, L-O-R-A-N-N-O-I-L-S.com. Yes. We were sitting here, and before we went to break, Keeb, you mentioned your music career. Tell me about this, man. What did you, you do in New What's York? What did you do? I'm a big music guy, too, yeah. so... What labels? What was it? Absolutely. Well, I got, I got my start actually at a company called Columbia House. You remember the whole mm, the mail order wow. business mm-hmm. yeah, uh, back in the day, which was actually an incredible place to learn about marketing, right? Because it's it was direct. It was before the internet days. It was really Real the style. only only yeah. way you could get music in a lot of places, unless yeah. you went to your local Walmart, right? Let's go. And so we sold a lot of music. Actually. It, at our peak, we were 15% of the market, which is kind of crazy That's when you huge. think back on it. Which is huge. And um, so I got to, the great thing about that gig is that I literally got every CD that ever came out. Good. I got to go to every show I ever wanted to go them? to. I, I got rid of a bunch of them when I moved from New York to LA. It's because so funny, I remember doing that too. I used to have a BMG, when I used to go to BMG, just grab every CD I could imagine, the big distribution companies like that. Oh, It was great. Well, so at Columbia House, I got everything. And then I helped start their new media department early on and then i got recruited away to go and start the new media department at rca records and i from there i started work my way up because i had this background in marketing they pretty soon gave me all of the marketing for all of bmg and then they gave me the digital business so that was right before itunes hit so i was there from sub 1 million in revenue for for digital all the way into 125 million when we merged with Sony. And then I was the general manager for BMG, Sony BMG North America for digital $250 million business. Wow. I remember you telling me this when we met before, Key Point. Uh, people that don't know, like BMG is just the biggest monster it was back then, too. Yeah. And you were working in when it was the biggest, biggest. When best. it was actually huge. It was, <laughs> it, it was your iTunes of what people look at. Yeah. Like, imagine running and doing marketing for iTunes yeah. and Apple. Like, this is what it was equivalent to. Or iHeart. Yeah. I mean, it's just as big as it gets. It was opinion. one of the, at the time, it was one of the big five. And then when we merged with Sony, it was, we were one of the big four. But yeah, I had a seat at the table, which, which was pretty incredible for all the new business deals, you know, all the amazing entrepreneurs that were kind of coming through. Huge. And what I think helped me a lot in this industry is it was very much like the wow, wow west, right? It was like very disruptive. It was like these new technologies, these new behavior patterns. It's like, what do you mean people only want one song? What do you mean people will actually pay money to put a snippet of, mu- of music on their phone as a ringtone? Remember, that was yeah. like a big business wow, for a minute. Man, come like, on. Like that. So when yeah. I actually left so- uh, Sony BMG to move to LA, I actually came out to run the mobile content studio for a company called Infospace. Yep. We did $225 million a year in downloadable content. Wow. It was like... And, and it was mainly ringtones. Yeah. And remember, they were they had this thing called ring back tones. Right. Yeah, they had oh, all yeah. those things, and we did it for nine nine cents, twelve nine nine. They oh, started going all over the board. It was crazy. The come up. The, the three nine nine for the good ones, and seven nine nine for the better well, ones. The better ones, yeah, yeah, right. It's kind of funny when and you think back on it now, right? Snippet of a song, dude, that just played over and over on your phone. Yeah. And I people, think we I got bought, bamboozled. I, 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 bought one. I think I did a few. I bought one. <laughs> yeah. I got bought one. We were uh, talking about that just yesterday. And really, all they were, I mean, it was just really? a, a simple yeah. code that the just hooked up to your phone and just made it a ringtone. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And then, but, but it was licensing too. There was licensing. Well, involved, and that's where, sure. and so I, w- so I ran the licensing from both sides. And so really that's the model I look at right now. Engager Brands is almost like a record label, right? In that we're creating different, sub brands that are our artists right our heavy grass is an artist and then within heavy grass we'll do like collabs so we did the collab with clown from slipknot and then we've got neon roots is one of our uh, other you know bands that's kind of focused on our edm audience and it's all about licensing right because intellectual we're an intellectual property company at the end of the day we don't hold any cannabis licenses right and we did that purposely because our we really are looking at the long game and it's easier for us to go into other states and to other countries if we're not beholden to kind of feeding the beast here through a vertical integrated license. You, you know what's great? Concept, yeah. Well, you know what's great though is you're, you're actually come, bringing your expertise into the space and I, exactly. and I look at that and a lot of people, again, they don't realize and, and this goes back to the aftershock and the events and, and, and the, the artists and everything that we're pulling in because we, we do the same thing, right? Yeah. We're very, very much in, in tune with each other's world. We should mm-hmm. explore much more. For sure. But, but, you know, diving into that part of it going, you know, what the, the world doesn't really get yet 
is that we're all the same market, right? Right now they're looking at like, well, that's the stoner market. No, fuck you. You smoke weed too. We're not the stoner market. We're just a market. We're just in the business of it. And so it seems like, you know, mm. and it's like, you know, all those same people show up to those same events and smoke a joint at the same concert. We're all part of the same market. Yeah. It just, it feels like we're, we're looking for, you know, like that the, the reality is, is the, I guess the acceptance of it being okay. Like it is for well, alcohol. Not only that, like for, Budweiser for that, for that presents alcohol, the big for that, concert. For you that know what mean? drink, you know, we, exactly. we, we, you know, we can go there and explore. You can see Coors, you know, vodka, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels yeah. Every single, you know, uh, Hennessy, every single beer, Coors Light, you know, Bud Light. But you talk about a, a cannabis company. Get set, your heavy set, grass. Get oh, your no. heavy grass there. Go ahead and get your, this brand or that brand. It becomes like, Oh, this is one of those it's, events. It's super illegal. It's super difficult. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, you know at, at aftershock, for instance, you know, obviously the, you know, those alcohol brands can sell whatever they want on site. Correct. We can't, we have right. to, we have to go with the ice cream truck model, right? Yeah. It's like, BCC, Hey, see, it's gotta be delivered go, there. Go it's to be- get your delivery, you know, okay. outside the grand. And then unfortunately the way that, uh, the park is set up there, they don't allow re-entry. So well, not only that, if you bring illegal weed, you could smoke it. Yeah, you can smoke it anyways because you're going to anyways. You're going to crack your beer. You're going to smoke it in a, in, whether it's and which indoor, is fine. That's fine. Whether yeah. it's indoor or outdoor, and and I'm just saying though is, is that we're just looking for that cannabis acceptance to say it's okay to to be able to go to the front counter, buy a a, a, a Coors Light, buy a shot, or smoke a joint, whatever you're going to do for recreational purposes at that event, and it's coming. Yeah, it's the it's holy coming. grail for it's for coming. us. I mean, yeah. kudos to you guys for your event. You know, having. Uh, sales and consumption there. I mean, it's it's really challenging because, yeah, I mean, why should it be treated differently? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Sure. And and when we looked at, at my first company that so I got into cannabis about eight years ago now, then um, I was with a couple of other media guys and we were kind of figuring out what our entry point was into cannabis. And we were like, you know what? This was like eight years ago. The the branding and the, and the content is pretty terrible. You know, this was like like the content was typically like YouTube videos of guys doing bong rips and, yeah. you know, or dabs. Yeah. And it was like, but you started to realize that, oh my God, all the content is really being created for just one audience segment. And the more research we started to realize is that that was actually only 10% of the, of the market opportunity. Sure. So, oh my God, 10% of all of the content and the marketing and the branding that's being created, and this was eight years ago, is just for that. And that all well, that everybody uh, wants to see someone pass out and get high and pass out. You I know mean, what I mean? And lock their head on the ground and laugh. There's like, a, there's not, a market for low dose. There's no, a no, market that, for that's not know. everybody's, you know, like I didn't want to see that. I seen people that knock it out and, and I'm like, damn, that sucks. Like this is making, you know, this me- medicinal product, uh, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and well, there's it, a lot of that. But I might, I mean, that happens. I mean, in general, right? I mean, there could be any product, let alone. No, I know, that, but that he's saying good. in the beginning, there that oh, almost stupid, all the content, stupid. all the content that was coming out was was stoner stupid. It was built to make people laugh. Propaganda or, or, of look what uh, it is, and oh my god, we're so. Stupid. Or to create I mean, the and, taboo. To, well, that's exactly, you know, and it's, well, it's, it's the propaganda what, yeah. exactly played right. into the stigma, and so that's part of like what we're all trying to do here is to try to rise above, right? Is to it's it it should be accepted it's a plant it's got incredible medicinal you know benefits there's all these amazing things about it that there's no reason why this should be treated any differently in fact it should be like put on a pedestal above alcohol right like sure. how many deaths have come out of uh, cannabis? how many I mean, fu- when you look at facts like that yeah Kevin, you, you can't you, even you come do close. those that's it's the part of close. numbers that bothered me when you think about it like when you think about this and you think of programs like mad mothers against drunk drivers and you know you should be thinking about programs that really support cannabis and a factor of like those numbers yes there's a couple of things bad of course but you know you don't see it it's not like right. oh he got so stoned he waited to leave and it's just not it's I, not the norm i will say that things have changed a lot i've got ac- actually an interesting anecdote so my mother was in mad when i was growing up okay. so when i got into cannabis eight years ago grown man terrified to tell my mother i was going into cannabis right because wow. she was in mad sure. and i was like What's that? Oh, mothers oh against drunk drivers. Mothers yeah. against yeah. drunk driver, but they were against everything, right? They sure, were yeah. against drunk. Like, uh, you they know. had an opinion on everything. No, yeah. No fun for you. No, they marched uh, like, exactly. Yeah. They were the no fun fucking. <laughs> Let's just call it. God bless you all. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who died, and I get it. Don't get no, me wrong, but they're, sure. they're hardcore. And, I like it. and so, um, but it was interesting. So at first, I I got my dad, and I was like, I told my dad first, and he's like, that's really interesting that you're doing this. He's like, 
you know what? You should talk to your mother because maybe you can help her. And I was like, help her. That's interesting that that, that would be your perspective. Of words, yeah. And then when I talked to her, she's like, oh, okay, you know, I've been trying to figure out how to get off these pharmaceuticals. I'm taking eight of them right now. Wow. Is Can you help me figure out what cannabis works for me? So I flew her out. This is before they live in Pennsylvania. It's before it was legal in Pennsylvania. I, I took her to a caregiver here that walked through all of her symptoms and everything. And we started to figure out what would work for her. And we got her off half of her pharmaceuticals. Right? Wow. No way. And that, hey man, what a blessing. that was for me. That was when I really fully it came full circle for me of like realizing what we were we were all working towards here right because think of how many people like my mother are out there that just refuse to even consider you oh, know cannabis right stuck stuck and stuck taboo in, right oh, that's stuck in, in, in training dude it's it's i mean i i can go real deep right now but i'm gonna just say it's training you know yeah. and a lot of us have training and, and that training uh, you've been you know, makes us a certain way you know yeah. and and it's it's almost like you know uh it's just sad you know what i mean it's just sad, it's really you know? sad well, and it's, just it's not only mean. sad but it just is what it is but it, it's sad to the point of there's still a little hope because your mother for instance now she, where is she at with it she's off right. half her pills that she used what's the protocol that i mean she's smoking blunts bong loads what is she doing she won't she refuses to smoke she's, she's into down. she's into the only edibles. the only the edibles but look here i think it does show in the numbers right you talk about the numbers game i think what is the most recent uh 62 percent or something like that of all americans believe that the recreation cannabis should be fully legal yeah i think 89 percent think it should be medically legal oh, i got this the point. biggest vote yeah, right voting, I mean, period. so if you look Literally, at that and and, and and that's driven a lot of increase by the senior community because they're starting to see the benefits there's they're they're taking cannabis for the first time or their friends are or their their family so it's pretty it's pretty incredible but you know, getting back to what we're, what we're doing is that, you know, we're just trying to like, look, you're already consuming cannabis, like when you're out at events. And so you should have your own brand, right? That speaks sure. to you and, and it should be normalized. You shouldn't be ashamed. You know, you should be able to wear, well, it's pretty cool because we've been doing Aftershock now for like four years. So we get these people that show up and they wear their heavy grass t-shirt that they got from the year before. Nice. Right. Yeah. And it starts to show it's like, yeah, we're resonating. Right. And they're like, I want this year's t-shirt. I want the special edition. And uh, that's pretty incredible. Um, but one thing I wanted to also bring up because it's it's a little bit unique, I think, in the market right now is our, our Neon Roots brand. So we've got these infused pre-rolls and you guys have them in there. We put together these products specifically around the life of a of a music festival goer and a, a raver and we've got our first up tempo and that's when you you smoke that to start your evening it takes you way up it's got thca diamonds it's got um right it's got batter uh that's that that's the next one that's the um i didn't get my knee on that's dude. the near oh we'll have to get you uh we'll have to get you an up tempo that sucks man because i probably gave it to joe hold on let me check this uh, out <laughs> that's what i get for trying to talk game exactly huh? so oh, so we've got these special terpenes that we work with this israeli company and th it's funny these is this, these is you know the israelis have been doing more research than than the americans have right of course on 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 a lot of this stuff wow. they figured out the terpenes that work within to counter interact with your neuroreceptors for whatever it is that you're looking to do so we wanted like the right terps to help take you up yeah. and then that's our up tempo and we put 200 beats per minute on that so you know nice. that it's got a lot it's it's that's this is so going like this <laughs> then we've got our neuro which is the other one and that like keeps you going well, you you don't want to go get and then we are coming out next with our chill out and that's going to have cbn and cbg and that's like i just need to knock out it's the end of the night wow yeah. but we're really trying to take this approach of like okay what what works for the lifestyle of this of target party, audience yeah. of the party right and not just trying to cookie cutter like oh this is just what we have and this we is fire it's like just call it fire. everyone's got fire everyone's <laughs> got the best but like trying to figure out like how does it fit into your lifestyle that's really, why how does it work for that person right and that group of individuals really so because you're having a communal experience yeah. to, it, right that's what music's all about going to music and cannabis is a part of it so we're trying to help enhance that by creating the products that work within that environment for that audience in a way that you know we think is going to be the future um and it's a little early honestly i have to say we've had some some pushback sometimes from a lot of the the shops because we don't fit in like these these infused pre-rolls are a little different 
Sure. You know, they smell a little different because they've got the terps that, you know, that kind of are a little bit aromatic. It's almost it's smells. Kind of it's a different vibe. But uh, once people try them and smoke them, they're like, holy shit, you got to really? send me some more wow. of those. Let me do that again. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I could totally relate with that. Right. Like I can relate to, um, you know, being at an event, especially like my own, like not this, not the Burning Trees Festival, but we did a like one at MJ BizCon at the Hustler and you know it's three stories of, of you know a strip club but it's like rooftop on the top so they don't have any dancing second floor they have no dancing there and then the, the bottom floor was a strip club and you know we we're sitting there you know and, and I'm at the door like just watching a thousand people trying to get in and I hit a joint and it took me and it wasn't mine and she, and that was my fault you know shout out some to random. me for smoking a random you know some random person's weed it's weird because i don't normally do yeah, that okay. right someone randomly walks up and hands me weed i don't smoke it but i kind of knew the guy and i hit it but but i you know all of a sudden my whole mouth was super dry i was over i was over like paranoid in my head really? it wasn't what i was looking for you know what i mean at all you know and i don't know if it was because there was um you know what in it you know what i mean but my fault right but but i guess what i'm trying to say is you're absolutely right it's finding that what you know is going to fit for you and the crowd and the in the the feeling that you're looking for super important especially at an event and to try to yeah. cater that feeling yeah that's just dope you guys are catering that feeling, cater. using terpenes using things that take you up now yeah. do you guys have your own farm we don't so we don't hold any licenses and we did that for a reason because we are an intellectual property holding company we want to expand into other states and other countries. In fact, we're going into Michigan before the end of the year. That's our next state. We're in talks with six other states. We're in, we are in with our ancillary products right now in Mexico. We did the first ever activation at a Mexican music festival out in the open cannabis brands. Our three brands, Monterrey, uh, we were at the Machaca Music Festival, 40,000 people there. Wow. It was incredible. People were so excited um, and yeah, Mexico is going to be a huge, huge market. Oh, yeah. um, you know, we're down in, in Colombia. So we partner. So here we have a great partner um, who who handles all of our growing up in Sacramento. Uh, former legacy guy, been growing for 25 years. Um, and that's, you know, we just want to support the, the best of breed. For us, you know, heavy grass, it's really about affordability. So it's less for us about whether it's, indoor or outdoor but is like does it provide the experience at the price point that you're look that audience is looking for that's why i say it's the jack daniels of weed right it's not it's not well it's not the most expensive but it's not the it's most not the cheapest but it's a jack's good brand, brand but it's a yeah. solid it's a solid brand that people like it it's respectable and, and, especially the apple cider and the cinnamon and the nice flavor the honey jack <laughs> I mean, yeah. there you go and yeah. then if you really want to step up you get a little big brother yeah, yeah. you know what i mean get a little big brother there's so many more things we want to talk about let's break come back and we'll do the high five with you it's cannabis talk 101 we'll be right back after this keep it locked right there hey hey Advanced Nutrients, you guys, they got a complete growing system for cannabis that optimizes all phases and cycles to bring your crops to their true genetic potential. Discover more at advancednutrients.com. It's great to be here today with you, Keith, and hearing all the stories that you've done in the music industry and just knowing what you've done and me personally knowing what BMG is. It's like literally yeah. my BMG story, too, to think about that. That's the last place I in, well, hung out with Notorious B.I.G. was at the BMG Studios mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And I got to listen to his double album in a van downstairs with Lance. I don't know if you remember Lance that worked at the BMG Studios, mm -hmm. but Lance and the whole, oh my silly silly with my homeboy Lance. You kind of look like Lance a little bit. You guys look a little bit like. <laughs> um, but that legacy of doing that industry and seeing the correlation of the Wild West of being bringing groups together and using these analogies that you're doing, 
like Blue said, bringing that professionalism, I, I just can't wait to see more. Uh, and we're seeing yeah. it, meaning doctors are doing it. We were in Pasadena, Keev, and to see you come from the music industry, right? And we come from the music industry respectfully as well. So that's kind of dope, right? So all three of us come from this industry and we're pushing events and doing big things. But now we're seeing these doctors, scientists. We just had a guy on here that was interviewed to work at NASA or fucking yeah. other big things. And he was like, oh, I picked NASA, I guess. No, it was it was uh, NASA and... Uh, State, whatever uh, the no, big... No, Tesla. Work. No, not Tesla. It was, it was Tesla. NASA and one other big whatever. Just a SpaceX. Big, SpaceX. SpaceX. You're Thank right. you. You're right. SpaceX or NASA. Yeah. And he's actually well, SpaceX NASA. is owned by it's Tesla. Yeah, it's Elon. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Either way, you're you're right, so to speak. Not but, really, but yeah. But either way, <laughs> we're we're getting these Sniffing. professionals come in, and then we're starting to see this whole game change. As you see this game change, though, and you're seeing the other professionals come in that don't have the cannabis background, though, do you think it's a little more difficult for them to see, like, the Wild Wild West mentality in the game that really is the game when they come in going, oh, shit, that's not how we did it at NASA? You know what I mean? Like, oh, that, that, hence, that's how it was in the radio and music world, and... Oh shit! This is the cannabis world, and there's taxes, and this, and they're changing the law, and changing taxes. the rules, and I went to jail for this. Now, what the fuck? Yeah, this is the hardest industry I've ever worked in. That's for yeah. sure. I mean, I, I I remember back in I think it was like 2018, you know, during the the, the green rush, right, where uh, all these all these companies were flush with cash, and you started to see some of these um, really high powered CMOs come into the space which I was thrilled, like people like with serious chops, marketing chops to help like professionalize, take this to the next level. They just blew their money though. Bro. And well, they came in <laughs> and they were left screaming because like, oh my God, my toolkit doesn't work here, yeah. right? Like all these things that I could do yeah. in whatever industry <laughs> they the were gap. in. It's not right? the gap, motherfucker. Exactly. Yeah, toolkit doesn't work it, here. It's <laughs> the real spit right there. That's exactly yeah, I love it. that analogy. It's, it's true. a good one, yeah. It really it does. does because, it. And it's like, so I think the cannabis industry, if you're going to survive and thrive in here, you've got to be someone that's got a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit to them that's yeah. willing to kind of figure out that there's a lot of gray out there and how to play in it and yeah. understand that the rules are 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 are, are evolving on, on on the regular and I mean it's it's like you've got the government's telling you different things you've got the state telling you something else the city's telling you something else and then you've got Facebook telling you something else and Google telling you and something then, and else then some and geek off the street trying to tell you how to do it you know what I mean? And you're like, fuck you. And then and you can't like, get a bank account. And they're mad you at you. They're account. mad at you because you're not doing it right. You know, and it's like you're not doing anything. You can't. You, you know, you can't win. I mean, that's that's a, that's it's it's yeah. pretty it's pretty crazy. Look, I, I'm with you there, there, Joe. I welcome. I mean, look, I love the fact that there's more and more um, professionals. I think it's 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 really important for this industry to grow. Yeah. I do think that at some point, though, um, there needs to be some sort of a coming together because, like, you know, I don't think it's all like oh legacy is bad or all like these new professionals are bad no. Be because each you know but it's the only way that we're truly going to grow is, is each of them have to embrace each other and we have to figure out how to work and grow this up together because otherwise we're just going to be infighting when we should be fighting everyone else right well, together yeah, right? the thing that i look at that is is i don't i don't fall for the bullshit you know like i really look at you know people that are coming in talking shit and saying this and it's just like i don't listen to them I don't have, I have nothing to say to you. I just keep marching. You so know, funny. Too. You and, can and, see them right away. You see them soon. I have people like come at us all the time, you know, want to create some kind of narrative, some kind of, you know, imaging. And I'm like, man, fuck your imaging. And, you know, I don't even say that though. I just, I just take action and do what I'm supposed to do. And I think that's been one of our biggest, you know, growth spurts is because when you don't fall into someone else's drama and you don't allow them to, you know, even don't even acknowledge them. I don't even acknowledge people with bullshit. Haters going to hate. That, that, dude, and, and again, it's the elephant keeps walking as the dog keep barking. And I noticed the bigger the elephant gets, the more dogs to start bark. Yeah. You know what I mean? That means and, you're doing something right. They know right. damn well. They know <laughs> damn well what they're barking at. They're barking at their own, you know, bullshit. And oh, they're jealous. You know, they, they've been Indeed. a part of the whole, like, we're all walking down a path. And it's like, dude, you throw an event like Burning Trees Festival, you throw an event like Aftershock, you put together a box like this that actually has product lines in it, and you got people that don't have any of those things barking at you. Yeah. Like, how are you even talking to me on the same page? Like, let's not be unrealistic, but be unrealistic. <laughs> and to think, you ready for this? People listening, CT101 Inc. is this company, and your company right there too, Keith. Don't touch 
we don't have no licenses. We yeah. don't have no cannabis uh, associations. We, we know we're, we're regular media companies, but we're so heavily involved in this cannabis space, folks. So if you're listening going, I want to get involved in the cannabis space, there's still more opportunities to do so. Like learn whatever it is that you're doing. Hospitality is a huge one. Yeah. I, I think about that going, there's so many ways that people think, oh, I'm in the hospitality field. It's a big industry, right? It's been a big industry for Come years. Come on in. Dog, it's, it's such Water's a big warm. part. Oh, my friend runs a, a company. I'll give her a, a free plug here uh, called High B&B. Have you heard about that one? No. Really? No, but I love it. It's the Air, uh, Air Airbnb, Airbnb for, for, for cannabis. For yes, stoners, yeah. High it's, B&B. I lo- get, let's get her on the show, please. Let's yeah, plug her. I man. want her on the show. She's great. Is she doing well? It, you know, she's been, ha- I, I think she's doing well, but you know, like all of us, you know, it's a struggle right now in this industry. Um, you know, in particular for her, I think she's, because she really is trying to, you know, kind of normalize this. And again, like anytime you're disruptive within sort of an established industry and you're coming at it from a cannabis angle, it's tough because oh, you're, it, yeah. it's already tough to be a disruptor anyway, but if you're being a disruptor and you're coming from cannabis, then it's like, you've just got that added extra sort of hurdle that you have to that have to overcome. Yeah. And then I think she runs into a lot of the same issues that we have, which is that, um, you know, in order to grow the way, the way that we need to grow is we need capital. Yeah. And there's limited capital resources out there for companies like ours because there's no real banking, because a lot of the more traditional investors or even the banking vehicles, right? Like I can't even go out and get a line of credit, yeah, you know, yeah, like period. I can't go you can't out even open a bank account. I can't even no, go out keep one open I mean, and, and use any of these like traditional like financial vehicles that any other yeah. industry could use. And then you talk about the the investment community and people that are actually investing. Most of the investors that have already come into this industry already came in during the green rush and got burned. And so they're now like not coming in as much. And so for companies like ours, like, look, we're an intellectual property company. We don't touch the plant. She's a, an, you know, a, a, you know, a hospitality company doesn't touch the plant. Should be a no brainer. You're a media company. Don't yeah. touch the plant. But the like, bank still shut us down. But well, yeah, we, they, they hear that. Oh, you guys are cannabis talk one on one, and boom. You know, my I've had several uh, you know company accounts kicked out of the fucking ba- local banks. You know, because we're they find out about the they show. They find out about the show. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's just like so. You know, dude, we do a show. <laughs> we don't we sell do a show. Cannabis. We don't sell the plant, dude. We don't. I mean, you know, there's there's certainly cannabis around, but we don't sell cannabis. We don't have nothing to do with it. You know, we're, we're, we're strictly, you know, we have ads and, you know, we bring awareness. Account. We sell marketing. Right. We sell yeah. marketing. Yeah. And yeah. we're yeah. partnered with iHeartRadio. And it's like, you still can't give us a, you know, you know who actually did is uh, Bank, Bank of California. Bank of California. B-A-N-C. The Bank of California. Bank. You know, we got a good guy over there if you ever need somebody. Craig. 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 Craig's, Craig's a great guy. You know, oh, you Craig. know Craig. Oh, you work with Craig. Shout out to Craig. <laughs> We haven't moved over yet, but, yeah. um, you know, uh, yeah. but, but, hey, we moved over to Craig. Craig's hustling and out in the cannabis good. industry. And that's I've been, been real good, good, actually. I like Craig. Yeah. He's I've been, I out. see Craig everywhere. He's, you know, he was at our last event we did with, uh, at Dr. Green Thumb in Cathedral City. And I, I see him at Green Street all the time. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, he's, he's out hustling. there. He's hustling he's for sure. Yeah. yeah. I am mad at him. And he's doing what the professional bankers need to do. Like, he's a high end banker. For that company like vp and he's going out to the cannabis industry so what's Our next practice. for heavy grass your team you know everything that you guys you guys got the neo stuff come in what else you guys got in the in the works so we're we're very focused right now on a couple of different things one is getting into other other states and other countries sure. because again there's fans it's amazing we've got all this demand and like because we have a big social media presence especially with heavy grass we've got like fans all, all everywhere and they're like when are you coming to us and so you know it's it's a lot of vetting right it was a lot of because we're we don't you know we don't grow you know you and just pay, you, you actually just build bucks yeah and right? and so we go I mean, out you had to go to someone else and license and, and, fill it, and they it. we we, we got to figure out who are the right you know best of breed partners you know for each of these markets and then another big piece that that's kind of it's kind of sad but true right now is that the easiest way right now to make money as a brand is to not sell cannabis. Um, I met with another brand recently. I won't say who they are, and they focus on a very specific audience. Cookies. And he, <laughs> he told me their numbers. This is not cookies. Yeah, but and he's they like, sell look, more t-shirts than weed for sure. He's like, we're <laughs> we're selling. We're sell, We've we sold over the last year and a half six million dollars worth of products through our e-commerce site. Yeah. And uh, we've sold like, you know, 
one million dollars in in cannabis products here in in California, and the margins are significantly better, and you get paid uh, on the regular, and you know there's a lot of issues right now. They I mean, pay on time. They pay on time. They keep your bank account open because it's a T-shirt or it's some kind of ancillary product. It's uh, so actually oh, yeah. that yeah. that reminds so. We're, we're actually launching this at, um, you know, speaking of ancillary products, uh, we're launching this at Aftershock and this is something we're, that it's, uh, it's, so check it out. It? So check it out. It's a, it's a grinder kit. So basically oh, nice. if you take off that, um, top. if you take off the top there, which is also like a, uh, it would be where you hold your joint. You could put your joint put there your joint or there. you could, put, but you take that off, you grind it. The, gr the, the weed goes straight oh, yeah. into the container and oh, then you yeah. take off the container top. And you got your little one hitter there. Oh wow! No way. This is the OG so one hitter. So it grinds in, goes it's updated, in. Then, it's yeah. the updated one hitter. Grinds in. Dope. You put your one hitter in there and dope. then hit it. Dope. Oh, dude, I like my it. dad carried one of these around his whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I the and metal one, right? The little shiny metal yeah, one. Yeah, the wood one. The, that looked like a cigarette. The, my dad had the wood one, and he had the cigarette one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had both of them. You know what I mean? I, I used to run them. I, so I this still, product's coming out, huh? Yeah, so it's, it's coming out at Aftershock. So just, We're launching them there. I'm not going that far. I'm not even going to get it over to you. I don't know. Is, I, this, is this a prototype right or pocket. is this one for us? You can have it, man. That's oh, yours. Let's see. Well, there that's it is. Okay, now you your can dad, touch right? it. Oh, this it is It does remind my pops. I love that it does. And honestly, like... For me, like if you know me, I don't smoke a lot. Like I'm not a big heavy smoker at all. Like, um, this is I, a good product though. And uh, and and so for me, it like one hits cool. Yeah, like, I don't want to get all blitz like I used to. You know, I love I'm, the one. I'm, like you know, I love I love smoking out of the one hitters. I've been doing it. You know, for my whole. Uh, I like that it's all magnetic like, too. And it's, it's metal too. Cool. It's like it it's heavy. Weight. Yeah. Oh, it's what great. is it? Well, do you know what what one of these are going to run wholesale, or retail, and all that stuff already? You guys. So we're se we're selling for thirty bucks. Thirty um, bucks retail or yeah. across the board. Retail. Just, yeah. Retail. Got you. Because I got I got, I have a, you know I used to own smoke shops. I just recently sold my last smoke shop. My brother still has a smoke shop. Uh, but uh, you know, they I know a ton of people have put these. Yeah, in we should we should talk because yeah. I mean that's it's like again it's like it works for the audience, right? These are concert goers. It's like they want to take their weed on the go. They want to be able to, you know, easily consume. You can put that through the metal detector. Too. Put it on the thing. Yeah. What is that? I don't. Whatever. Yeah. Go. Let it go. And uh, you know we're uh, so yeah these are, these are the kinds of, and actually we're selling these down in Mexico right now. Oh really? Um, yeah, because uh, you said this isn't going through the metal detector, huh, shot. Well, you're gonna pull yeah, it out. Not. You, I know, but I'm saying you can set it oh, out and you can get away the, with it. Yeah, the, you put it on oh. the counter and you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no one's gonna trip yeah. off it. Yeah. You gotta hope that you got the right, the right, the right security guard. But um, you know, <laughs> because you look at it, you're not gonna know what is it. It's not a lighter. It's so definitely not making it through the metal detector. No, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you gotta pull it out. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have to show them like, oh yeah, this is my sneaker. Keep. You got so many great things and so many great products. CEO, founder of Engager Brands. I love all the music stuff. I want to do the high five with you because I'm sure you got some interesting answers with yourself. And your real eclectic life you got going on with you. How old were you the first time you smoked cannabis, and where did you get it from? Well, I started a little later in life. Um, when I consider later, I was eighteen. Um, to, it was the first time I smoked cannabis, and the reason I smoke cannabis is because for the first time is that I couldn't I couldn't drink for a whole summer when I was eighteen because I had gone to the Bahamas and drank way too much rum Ooh. and I ate a hole in my stomach. Ooh. And my doctor said to me, if I were you, I would not drink the hard stuff anymore. In fact, take the whole summer off from any drinking. So I only drink beer and wine. So I was like, you know, uh, I, gotta, I gotta check out this weed stuff. And so I remember this girl, Chris, we were at a Santana concert at Pine Knob. I grew yes. up in the Detroit area, and Morayo. shout out to Morayo. And we uh, and I and we and we smoked. I smoked for the first time, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, this it just it just worked for me." And then when I went to college, um, let's just put it this way: uh, it it helped it helped me uh, get through college, you know, in in more ways than one, so both medicinally as well as. Um, Financially, uh, <laughs> there it is. It's always a good thing. <laughs> Question number two of the high five. What is your favorite way to use or smoke cannabis? Definitely using the heavy grass one hitter. Really? Yes. Oh, this is going to be so fun. I thank you for this, dude. Yeah. I, I really am excited. Like, like I, I'm a one hitter kind of guy. I really and I don't want to smoke anybody else's weed. I don't want to sit there and try and, you know, roll a big it's old. It's going to be your old stash you're going to have in your pocket. I can see that. That's oh, a good I one. Could, I could do this, you know, and take it's it a, good on, one. a Keep, little trip. Yeah. Thing. Question number three. What's the craziest place you ever use or smoke cannabis? Yeah, that's a. That's an interesting one, I would say. So I want I went to Costa Rica and I brought a bunch of edibles with me. Mm. 
<laughs> and I went to this cloud forest where you walked on these uh, these bridges. And I didn't, I think I overindulged a little bit, but it was pretty majestical. And, you know, I was up, like, literally up in the clouds. So for me, that was... In the clouds, walking on clouds. Hey. Walking on clouds. Were you actually right above the clouds or in the clouds or you're, a little of both? You, a little of both. You're in the clouds in some points. Sometimes you're above the clouds. Sometimes it's pretty, it's pretty it, amazing. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you were super ripped. I was super ripped. And uh, it's funny because I was actually there with my son, you know, no and it was like because I was like, oh, I'm just going to have a put a little extra on this one. And then, uh, and then you're like, damn, dude, I can't believe I'm so bad. Dad right now. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? So great lit. dad. We're having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. How old was your son, though? Yeah, like, I've never two. seen I've never seen my yeah, dad so happy. How old was he? He was probably like nine or ten. Yeah, yeah. Bad oh, dad. Yeah, right bad dad. Yeah. About two and a half. Hey, Doug, at nine and a half, they can take care of you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they can. Nine and a half. Oh, my uh, six-year-old. He's Doug, I drove good my dad when he was drunk at nine. Come on, yeah, man. I'm driving. Uh, you ain't driving. Give me the fucking key. Question number four of the high five. What is your go-to munchie after you get high? Lately for me, I, I just can't get enough of those salt and vinegar kettle chips. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think my wife might be smoking because she'd be yeah, eating them up all the every time. Night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to check my stash. I can't stop at one and I'm done with the whole bag and it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. Dude, those are what my daughter now is into. Those are like a crack thing at my house. And then my salt daughter does it. We got to get these for mom. I'm like, for mom, huh? Yeah, for mom, right? Exactly. Well, at least you don't take the hot sauce with you, right? I don't. Oh, right. <laughs> the vinegar and the hot sauce. My, my aunt used to have the hot sauce and the chips. Oh, Oh my gosh, mm. everywhere. Keeve, here it goes, brother. Question number five of the high five. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Yes, with us. man. But if you could smoke cannabis with anyone, dead, dead or, or alive, alive, who would it be and why? Well, I got to stick with my hard rock roots and say I would I would want to smoke down with, to me, the greatest guitar player of all time, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, Jimmy, I knew it. Uh, Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy, you have a have pick it. in this box. I mean, I, the, the, to use your musical knowledge to say, Jimmy, to Amazing. have a pick in your box is so symbolic of everything you're about. Yeah. That's crazy. And for yeah. me, it's like, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, I mean, Jimmy played for uh, Little Richard um, before he kind of went off on his own. He played with a lot. Just, just to kind of be able to smoke down and just say, you know, what was it like? Because he came up, you know, I mean, especially Supre for someone like <sighs> being being you know a a black rock and roller at that time was yeah. was super groundbreaking still and like everything that he went through and uh and plus like what a creative genius too i mean just yeah. just an incredible shredder and so shredder yeah it would just hard. would you like to do some acid with him too though i mean yeah, if, well if we're gonna I add to it i would go i mean if, 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 if jimmy's in the building and we're smoking i might have to have a head bond in with a few right tabs away. in it you i'd do mean? it i'd do it if he put a headband on, he goes, put this headband on. Oh, Don't worry dude, about what's underneath rat. it. Don't worry about uh, the headband. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, as soon yeah. as your pores like open up, Jimmy you'll Hendrix be in heaven. Jimmy stories of fucking acid <laughs> in his headband. You're like, you're going to enjoy this one. It's like, oh, I mean, he's just shit. monumental. He's one of those guys. Like, you know. The experience, I mean, you know, obviously he, you know, passed way too young. But, I mean, the experiences that he had in his short time here, the stories I'm sure he could tell, I would just love yeah. to hear them. Listen, anything that we missed before we let you get on out of here? No, I just say have to say that, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, uh, and I'd love to continue to connect with you guys, sure. you know, since I think there's a lot of overlap in what we do. But, uh, you know, I think this is going to be posting right before Aftershock. If you're in Sacramento area, come check us out. We're actually also going to be there the weekend after. They're doing a festival called Golden Sky there. Yeah. It's focused a little bit more on country, but we're going to continue to act activate there because we're really looking at, you know, anytime we can touch music audiences, we want to be there. Uh, so, and come, please come to, uh, you know, Heavy Grass Official on our IG because we will be officially launching those smoke kits uh, yeah. after Aftershock if you want to get one. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say thanks and, and, and let's, uh, let's continue to kind of move forward and upward and onward as we, as we kind of destigmatize this plant and, and really build towards a bigger future for all of us. Yeah, yeah. we're here to support whatever you got going on, brother. Let's, well let's move together. Well, there it is, guys. It's Cannabis Talk 101. And remember this, if no one else loves you, we, we do. do.